Hello, is that uh, Winds and Clean Sheets? Yeah, uh, where have you gone? Can you actually, like, come back to Sunderland, please? Oh god, Sunderland 3, Accrington 3. It's literally banterific, isn't it? Uh, wow. I mean, for Accrington, great result for them. Um, for the neutrals, good game. For us, embarrassing result, really. But again, it's the same sort of stuff as losing to Wigan. Um, uh, I'll congratulate Hull. Matt Hull and mathematically promoted. Um, did that, unlike us, they decided to do their job professionally. Um, you know, got promotion back to the championship and Peterborough are all but there. I know Lincoln have a game in hand on them, but the gap's 10 points. And actually, all Peterborough need to do now is just not lose to Lincoln and they're in the top two. So um, there you go. I mean, obviously, it's... In a way, you know, I'm quite glad that the top two things just put permanently to bed now. But, like I said, that came with the proviso of winning today, winning a good couple of the last few games, which we can still do, to be fair, um, and get some momentum going into the playoff places. But, like I said, it shouldn't have come to this. If someone told me after that um, Peterborough game uh, a few weeks ago that we would only get two points out of our next, what is it, um, five games, whatever it is since Peterborough, um... I would have, I would have, that, that, and, and to be fair, that is embarrassing. I know people have their issues about whether the squad's good enough or not, but to only get two points out of the last 15 available is humiliating, really. And especially when you look, we've played Wigan and Accrington in that run-in as well. Um, but, you know, they got the, you know, the other teams got the results. We haven't. I just feel like we're kind of fizzling out towards the playoffs, aren't we? Um, on the goals themselves, poor defender from Accrington, probably for all, probably for all of our goals, but the first two in the first, in the first half, I actually thought Josh Gowan, one positive is that I thought he was our best player in the first half, and that's certainly not something I can say anywhere near often enough, um, first half controlled a lot of the game, I know Akron had the odd half chance in there, but I honestly thought Sunderland were comfortable, we could have been 3-4-0 ahead at half time if we'd taken our chances, but at the same, but at the same time in the second half, and I will stubbornly stand by this, you shouldn't need to score four goals to win a game. Defensively, we've got to really ask questions of ourselves. And I know people might go, well, oh, well, you know, we've only got one fit centre half. Well, yeah, that's true. But at the same time, we kept clean sheets in March. We were, we were doing quite well. Well, I think it, actually in March, I think we only conceded once in the league. So I'm not buying that as an excuse personally. If you feel that way, fair enough, but I'm not buying that as an excuse. I think we should be still defending a hell of a lot better. For the three goals that we conceded, um, the, f the first and the, the first one I thought was bad defending. Um, I know people might get that from Akron's perspective. That was a good through ball, to be fair, from Darius Charles. Um, but sorry, not Darius Charles. Um, Dion Charles. Jesus Christ, you can tell I'm really not at it today. But um, I mean, the first goal, like I said, um, it was a good fit. Despite all nine, I felt that Bishop, for example, I've just checked who scored the first goal. Bishop scored very good goal from his perspective, from an attacking perspective, from a defensive perspective. Switched off. Luke O9 switched off. Um, and the own goal, I mean, goodness me. <laughs> I, I literally don't know what we were trying to do there. But um, there you go. Uh, on the subs thing, I did feel that the first couple of subs that Johnson made, I felt that Grant Ledbetter, I thought, was the right time to make that because I couldn't have started to get too much of a football game. I think we were giving them too much respect in the second half. Um, and obviously we can see the second brought Jones and Diamond on to try and impact it. And then, of course, we brought Ross Stewart on with, like, one kick of the game left. Um, the third goal from us, very lucky. Um, but I would argue Akron got very... Obviously, well, not argue, Akron did get fortunate with our second goal. We got fortunate with our third. And then the free kick from McConville. Very, very well hit. Very good free kick. But again, it comes back to the same thing. And I've said this, and we, and we seem to stop doing it so much a month or so ago, but now it's starting to come back again, and I wish it wouldn't, when we're starting to give away stupid free kicks when we don't need to. And that was McGeady. McGeady gave away a needless free kick. Needless free kick. And even if he hadn't scored it, I would have still said, no, stop giving away stupid free kicks. Um, there you go. Um, <laughs> at least the top two things definitely gone now in these last three games. But um, guys... As a message to the players, please start turning up defensively because we've conceded 10 goals in the last five games. And if we're wanting to have any chance of winning the playoffs, we have got to cut out these stupid errors at the back. You were doing it a month ago. Go and do it again in the games coming up, please. And especially in the playoffs. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Like, comment, subscribe if you wish to. It would mean the world. And I guess I'll see you later.